Now that we've talked about objects, let's start talking about storage policies. For this video, we're gonna be talking about our RAID 0 FDT of zero storage policy. FDT is a new term we haven't talked about yet. That's our failures to tolerate. How many failures are we willing to tolerate in the environment? Whether that's a controller failure, a motherboard failure, a disk failure, et cetera, et cetera. How many failures are we willing to tolerate? And we start talking about our RAID 1 policies, our RAID 5 and RAID 6, that FTT number will come into play a lot more. So for this video, I'll just say RAID 0, FTT of 0. Let's use our file cabinet analogy from our objects video, where each VM is like a mini file cabinet. Once we open it up, we've got those five objects inside. We've got our namespace, our VMDK, our swap space, our snapshot, and our memory snapshot. But we have to start putting some data in there. And that's where components come to play. We've got one component per each object. And in a future video, we'll do a deeper dive about data on disks. And so we'll start talking about when we have large VMDKs, what does that look like from a component perspective? But for right now, we're going to keep things nice and simple. And let's just say that we've got one component per each object. Now for the snapshots, if we haven't created snapshots, we wouldn't have snapshot objects. But if something happened to that piece of data, let's say it's inside of a house, or an ESXi host, we had a controller failure, or we had a fire or flood, we would lose access to that data. We would then have to go to our backups, whether that's offsite or somewhere else, restore that data and make it back online. And that's where our failures to tolerate policies like RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 6 come into play, because we can still have access to the data in those failed states. But one of the benefits of our RAID 0 policy is a storage perspective. If I only got one copy of that data, let's say it's a 100 gig VMDK, if I've only got that one copy of the data, that's all I'm taking up in the vSAN environment, 100 gigs. When we talk about our other storage policies, we have to start having data in multiple locations to make that happen. So we're taking up more storage in the environment. So our RAID 0 policy will take up the least amount of storage. But some of the other use cases for a RAID 0 policy might be testing and development. We're a systems administrator, we're someone in DevOps, we're just testing something out. If we're to lose that VM, not a big deal. We could just either redeploy it or recover it from somewhere else in the environment. It's not critical data for us. Another example might be application clustering. Let's say we've deployed an application that has its own internal clustering mechanism. Well, do I need to have something on the back end that's also having my data in multiple locations? Maybe, maybe not. That depends on your environment and what kind of configuration you'd like to have. Or what about something that does data processing? We're just crunching a lot of data and then returning it back. If we lost that worker node, that one that's crunching the data, well, we would just redeploy it. So we don't need to have that redundancy on the back end, which leads us into our last potential use case, which is non-persistent VMs. Think about like VDI. We log into the VM, we do our work on there, our data is stored somewhere else on the network, we log off, that VM is destroyed, and we deploy a new VM. So do we need to have redundancy on the back end? Possibly. Probably not though. Wrapping up this video, we talked about our RAID 0, FTT of 0 storage policies. How we only keep one component per each object. And if we're to lose that one component, we would need to restore from backup or recreate that piece of data. But the trade off is a storage perspective. I'm only keeping one copy or one component of that piece of data, which means I'm maximizing my storage in the environment. In a future video, we'll do a much deeper dive into how we store components and talk about what happens when we have large VMDKs. We then finished off by talking about use cases, whether doing some kind of development or testing, whether doing some kind of application clustering, maybe have some kind of non-persistent VMs in the environment, or doing some kind of data processing. I hope you found this video informative. I'd like to thank you for watching.